This is part two of the Mathfolio series for seventh grade and this can again be used as test prep review or even for summer school. Um, if you did not view the first part you might want to go back and find that video and watch it. Um, this is also important the Mathfolio review sheet for this seventh grade final can be found at mathfolio.com slash seven slash final review. Okay, so this part two of four begins with question number 11. So here we go. If the daily low temperatures on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are these, so these are the three temperatures that we have been given, what is the mean average low temperature for these days? So in this case, we just add up these numbers and divide by three. So it seems pretty simple although we've got some negative numbers in there. So let's try adding them first. So we've got negative two plus negative one plus three. And then we're gonna divide this by three because there's three numbers. So one thing that we've gotta focus on is when we are adding a negative, we are really subtracting. So this, to do the numerator of this fraction, we're really doing negative 2 minus 1 plus 3, and then we're going to divide the answer there by 3. So one tool that always helps us with problems where we're dealing with addition and subtraction of negatives is the number line. So let's just handle this first little piece. Negative 2 minus 1, well, our starting number is negative 2 in this case and we are subtracting 1 so that means that we're making one jump to the left so that is our subtract 1 now we've got to be careful because it's easy to think that this number goes from negative 2 to negative 1 well it doesn't not if we're jumping to the left as we jump to the left it looks like the number gets bigger because the 2 changes to a 3 but the negatives there so it's actually a bigger negative so which means that it's a smaller number. So negative two minus one takes us to three, negative three, sorry, must remember that. Negative two minus one takes us to negative three. And then what we're told is we are going to add three. So we're at negative three and we're jumping one, two, three. And so the number in between is negative one, but we in fact end up back at zero. So this problem here becomes 0 over 3. Now, 0 divided by anything is 0. So our answer to this question, and again, we've got to try and use sentences to explain our answers. We can say that the mean average low temperature for the three days is zero and that wouldn't be good enough because we've got units degrees C so it might seem like it's a strange answer but zero divided by three is zero and so that's number 11 okay number 12 which of the following products are greater than or equal to zero so this inequality right here First of all, we need to know that it's telling us greater than or equal to. That's the first thing that we need to know. So let's go through it. We have some multiplication and we've got one strange addition in there as well. So let's go through the first. Negative five times zero. Well, anything times zero is zero. And then zero times negative two. Well, again, it's zero because zero times negative two is zero. So this one equals zero. What does this one equal? Negative four times negative three. Well, first of all, do the numbers. Four times three is 12. And then we've got a negative times a negative. So that's positive. So that makes positive 12 out of these two. So let me just write that 12. So now we've got 12 times by negative two. Well, 12 times two is 24. A positive times a negative is a negative. 
So this one equals negative 24. Okay, the next one. So we're just going through these, working them all out, and then we'll go back to the question. Negative 2 times negative 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. Negative times a negative is a positive. So these two give us 4. 4 times negative 3. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. Positive times a negative is a negative. So now this gives us negative 12. And then we are timesing this negative 12 by negative 5. Well, 12 times 5 is 60. And let's just make sure we've got negative times negative is positive. So that's, that's correct right there. Now, D, I'm noticing something with D. We could work this out. Negative 3 plus a negative. Well, when we plus a negative, we're really subtracting. So negative 3 minus another 5 is actually negative 8. But there's something I don't like about option D, and that is here we are asked about which of the following products. And this isn't a product. D is a sum. For it to be a product, it must have multiply. So therefore, this cannot be the answer. For E, we have been given 5 times negative 3. Well, 5 times 3 is 15. Positive times a negative is a negative, so this becomes negative 15. So now let's go back to the original problem, which is which of the following products are greater than or equal to zero? Well, C is greater than zero, it's 60. And A is equal to zero, so it can be greater than or equal to. So our answers are C and a. And keep in mind, in most multiple choice, there will only be one correct answer. It's just in this particular question, there's two, um, which is allowed for this test prep. But in most bubble in answer sheets, you will only be bubbling in one option. And in a case where there might be two correct, it might say something like F. Um, the answer is both A and C. And in which case, if this was true, you would just only bubble in yeah, option F. Okay, so number 13 is about percent increase. And so percent increase problems always deal with a change upwards. Obviously, it's a percent increase. So let's just look at this. A gallon of milk increased from 329 to 399. So our milk the original price of this milk we're told was 329 this was the original but as most things in life prices change and the sales and discounts and this price changed to 399 so it went up this wasn't a discount at all so to work out the percent increase the method is this we need to take the change in the price and we divide it by the original. And so in this case, the change in the price is $3.99 minus $3.29. And then we're going to divide it by the original, which is the $3.29. So Doing the quick math over here, we've got 399 minus 329. If we subtract 0, 7, bring down the point, 0. So the change was 70 cents, was 0 0.7 dollars. Keep in mind this trailing 0, we don't need it when it's a decimal. If we were just talking about money, given an answer in money, we would put it back. But just for the sake of the math, we do not need to put it back. So in this case, we've got 0 0.7 over 3.29. Now, this type of a question, most of the time, it's going to be a, a test paper where you're allowed to use your calculator. I'm going to do that right now. I'm doing 0 0.7, and I'm dividing by 3.29. And in this case, I get 0 0.21. Now, this number does in fact go on, 0 
two one it goes two one two seven and so on now I'm just gonna round this so I'm gonna put approximately now one thing that I must do here and I didn't do it up here is I need to times this by 100 that's what gives me the percent increase rather than a decimal increase this is the percent increase so when I times if I go back and put in these times by 100 times by 100 times by 100 what this is now going to do is move my decimal place two over so that's going to give me a final answer of approximately 21 percent increase so that's how much the milk went up this is number 14 and let's take a look so Caitlin draws a number line with chalk on the ground uh, Caitlin and her eight friends so often there's little tricks in questions now when it says stuff like this I'm just thinking to myself well Caitlin and her eight friends that's nine people they each throw a stone that lands on the number line the stones land on six five negative two and so on what is the mean average of these numbers so let's just check how many numbers we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine well we do have nine numbers and the mean equals the sum of them all so that's six plus five plus negative two plus zero plus negative one plus two plus negative nine plus negative four plus three again let's just count two, four six eight nine yep and we're going to divide all of this by nine and this is going to give us our answer so let's go through it maybe we can group little pieces this right here gives us 11 then adding a negative is really subtracting so 11 minus 2 gives me 9 so far 9 plus 0 with well, the 0 doesn't count then I'm adding negative 1 so that means 9 subtract 1 9 subtract 1 gives me 8 8 plus 2 gives me 10 and then plus a negative again so that subtract 10 minus 9 that gives me 1 1 minus 4 1 subtract 4 well again if we need to we could look at this right 1 and we're subtracting 4 so we go 1 2 3 4 and that takes me to negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 so 1 subtract 4 is negative 3 and negative 3 plus 3 if we go from negative 3 let me change color and we're adding 3 we go 1 2 3 and we get to 0 so in this case on the top we've got 0 on the bottom we've got 9 0 divided by 9 again much like the other question is 0 and so you know we should get used to writing these in sentences as I keep saying so the mean average of these numbers is 0 and so that answers number 14 okay, number 15 definition of a fair die okay so first of all a die is the singular word for a pair of dice so if it's more than one so if you've got two three or four etc then they are called dice if you only have one it's called a die and the definition of a fair die is really one where all six sides are equally likely and that's on a six-sided die if there's more sides or fewer sides then each side must be equally likely to come up so you might think well that's pretty obvious all all dice when you when you roll them if there's six sides then the probability of getting a one is one out of six the probability of getting a two is one out of six probability of a three is one out of six and so on all the way down to probability of rolling a six is one out of six now if this was the case then this would be a fair die but with early casinos and also with uh, some some places now if if they're cheating 
if they're scamming, they might have special dies, uh, dice where one one of the sides might might have a little more material, might be a little heavier, and it's something you won't see, but it will make it so that when the when the uh, the die is rolled, it comes up a certain number more than other numbers, and in which case that would be an unfair die. So, in a nutshell, a fair die is one in which all sides have an equal chance of coming up. And that's pretty much it. Number 16. So in this number again, it's, it's a word problem. Jose went on vacation with his friends. He took 150 spending money. He spent 79.50 on a new jacket. 37.50 on a theme park ticket and he bought each of his friends a souvenir fridge magnet that costs 175 afterwards he had exactly $19 left for how many friends did he purchase the souvenir fridge magnet okay so I've put a bunch of arrows here so there's one two three four five there's five useful pieces of information so first of all, which might seem backwards, but first of all, what I'm going to do is look at this question. For how many friends did he purchase? How many friends? This is what we're trying to find. How many friends? So I'm going to define a variable and say let f equal the number of friends. And if we're being very specific, this is the number of friends he bought a magnet for. Alright, so now we can jump to this this problem and try and take everything uh, everything into account here, all of the important information. So, you know, we've got a couple of ways. We can go piece by piece, or we could try and go to an equation straight away. Um, so let's try this with an equation straight away. His grand total that he was left with was $19. So at the end, he had $19. That's this piece of information right here. We were told that he started with $150. That's this piece of information right here. We, to we are told he spent $79.50 on a jacket. So if we subtract that $79.50, and I'm, I'm just going to leave it at $79.5. We don't need that trailing zero. And he also spent $37.50 on the ticket, minus $37.5. And then we're told that he bought, so we just dealt with this, then we're told that he bought each of his friends a souvenir fridge magnet that cost this, $1.75. So we're subtracting $1.75, but we would leave it like this if he only had one friend. And in this case, he doesn't because it says that he bought each of his friends, so there must be more than one. So if we bought two of them, we would times this by two. If we bought three, we would multiply by three. And instead of just using random numbers to multiply by, we are going to take the variable that we defined and put it in there. I'm going to put F. So what we're really saying is the 150 gets reduced by the 7950, and then reduced again by the 3750, and then reduced again by the 175 times F, the number of friends. And in this equation, because there is only one missing variable, we can find it. And so what we would do first is we would tackle the math for this side, which is all of these subtractions that are going on. So we could do this by lining up the numbers and then going through them all. I'm going to be a little lazy right now and just grab a calculator. So I'm doing 150, subtract 79.5, and then I'm subtracting 37.5 and I get an answer of 33. So right here, which is has the curly bracket underneath, the value is 33. So we've got 33 minus 175 F equals 19. Now this is a two-step equation. So now we can solve this. So I'm going to grab a different color. I'm going to grab the blue. I'm going to take this all the way up the top. So what we've got is 33 minus 1. 75 F equals 19. Now, to 
get the f on its own, we've got to think what's happening to it. Well, it's being multiplied by 175, it's then being subtracted from this 33, and then it equals 19. Well, if we want to get it on its own, we've got to start getting rid of the things around it. So we're going to do the inverse operation of this, this um, 33 here, which is actually a positive. So to neutralize it and turn it into zero, we're going to subtract 33, in which case we've got to do the same over here as well. And so now what we can do is we can cancel these. We bring down negative 1.75, and this is going to equal, well, here we're on 19 and we're subtracting a bigger number, so we know that we're going into negative. We're on 19, we're subtracting 33, we're going to go into the negative zone. So we know that our answer is going to be negative. To find out what the number is, we're actually going to switch this. We're going to do 33 minus the 19. And so if we borrow one, this case is going to be 4, this is going to be 1, it's going to be 14. So the answer is going to be negative 14 over here. Now, one thing that I missed out is our f. We must keep the variable there. It's negative 175 f. So you've got to really try and concentrate. Otherwise, if we miss things out, we're going to get it wrong. Now the next step is to divide by negative 1.75. We have to keep that negative there as we bring this down, but now we can cancel the coefficient, cancel the negative 1.75 by just dividing by it. We also have to do the same on the other side, divide by negative 1.75. One thing to start off right here is we can just cancel these, these negatives 1.75s. We're left with our f. And on this side, we can cancel the negatives themselves. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So now what we need to do is 14 divided by the 1.75. So as I grab my calculator, 14 divided by 1.75, that gives me an answer of 8. So it's a nice whole number, which is great, which gives me confidence that this answer is correct. We look back at the question, it says for how many friends did he purchase a souvenir fridge magnet? So we can write our answer as a sentence. Um, he purchased a fridge magnet for eight friends. And you know, this is a much better answer than just saying f equals eight. Even just saying f equals 8, we don't know what the units are. We're talking dog biscuits, Power Rangers. Uh, no, we're talking friends. And so if we were going to try and be lazy and just leave it with as few things as possible, we should say 8 friends up there. But really, we want to we wanna go back, check the question, and write out a full answer in a sentence. So number 16, the answer is he purchased a fridge magnet for 8 friends. Okay, 17. Okay, so for question number 17, it looks to me like this is a ratios and proportions because we have a comparison of two amounts right here. We're told Maureen uses six and a half cups. So I'm going to put a C for cups, six and one half cups to make enough special punch juice for 10 people. So I'm going to put a P for people. And the comparison of the two amounts is six and a half cups for 10 people. So I'm just going to put the 10 on the bottom. And this is a ratio now. We've written the ratio as a fraction. Then we're asked for a single serving. Single serving. So single serving is really talking about one person. And it says, how much water would she need? So we're looking for the number of cups. So in this case, it would be x is what we're looking for, the number of cups, which is in line with our cups legend, our cups key. And it says for a single person, so that's one person. And so this is really our proportion. Now, we could cross multiply here. We could do the 10 times the x and the 1 times the 6 and a half, and then continue. But because this is a 1 on the bottom, we can think of x divided by 1 is, is just x. And so this cuts out a step in the, in the long run. And all we need to do is 6 and a half divided by 10. Well, 
six and a half, we could do the C move to turn it into an improper fraction. Two times six is 12, plus one is 13. So six and a half is 13 over two. And we're dividing by 10. Now, one thing to just keep in mind here is that a whole number on its own is really over one. That's what it is in fraction form. And when we're dividing fractions, the, the really important thing to remember is this keep, change, flip. And what this really means is that we can write this 13 over 2 divided by 10 as 13 over 2, we kept it the same. We're going to change the division to multiply, and then we're going to flip the next fraction, the 10 over 1, to become 1 over 10 and we flip it to its reciprocal so reciprocal is the fancy name for flipping a fraction upside down and if we're flipping 10 then we have to think well really it's 10 over 1 and then do the reciprocal so this is our value of x so to multiply fractions we go straight across straight across 13 times 1 is 13 2 times 10 is 20 and so our answer is 13 over 20 cups. Doesn't look like we can simplify this. And again, you should really look back to the question, how much water would she need? And then you can answer it, she would need 13 over 20 cups of water. And that's our answer to number 17. Okay, number 18 is asking us to convert a percent to a fraction, which usually wouldn't be the biggest deal. We would just put it over 100. But this time, it's a little awkward because we have a very small percent that has a fraction built in with it. So let's really think what this means. This percent is 3% and 2 fifths of a percent. So let's take a look at this 2 fifths. And keep in mind, this is a percent, 2 fifths of a percent. So what's nice about fifths is that you can think of it, you can very easily get to tenths. So five turns to 10 by times two, let's do the same to the top, times two. So this is really four tenths. And four tenths as a fraction, as we say it, four tenths is really four in the tenths place for a decimal. So two fifths is the same as 0.4. But this isn't really what we had. We had three and two fifths percent. So let's change color and let's just use what we just found out to fix this a little better. So three and two fifths is the same as three plus the 0.4. So this is 3.4 and let's not forget it's a percent. So in order to turn this percent into a fraction, let's just very quickly remember our, our conversion triangle from a fraction to a decimal, the rule is divide. From a decimal to a percent, the rule is times by 100. And from a percent to a fraction, the rule is put over 100. So now that we have this, this percent here, 3.4%, We've got to think, how do we go from this percent to a fraction? Well, up here it says put it over 100, which we could do. That's one method. We could do 3.4 over 100. Um, but this isn't strictly just a fraction. This is, a, this is a, a, a decimal fraction. We've got a decimal on top. So in order to get rid of that, we've got to times this by 10. And do the same on the bottom. So this becomes 34 all over 1,000. And then we could simplify this by divided by 2, divided by 2, which would give us 17 over 500. This is one method to solve it. The other method that we can use is to look at our conversion triangle and then go f from our 3.4% back to the decimal, which would be divide by 100, which would mean jumping it 1, 2. So it would go there, and then we would fill in the invisibles, the invisible zeros. So our decimal would be 0 0.034. And to go from this up to a fraction, 
what we would do is look at the last number, the last digit we have here, and think what place is it in. Well, this is our tenths, then we've got our hundredths, then we've got our thousandths. So the denominator would be 1000, and then we would read the number on top without this decimal, which would be 34. And then, of course, we could simplify this in the same way that we did over here. Simplify it, but our final answer is 17 over 500. Okay, question 19. So this asks us for an equivalent ratio to 3 over 4. Now, 3 to 4. Now, we could write this as, as 3 over 4. It's no problem. And the other way to write a ratio is with the words t with the word to 3 to 4 um each of these ratios we just say 3 to 4 now often if we had a ratio that could be simplified that's exactly what we would do when we were asked for an equivalent ratio here we can't simplify 3 over 4 so to find an equivalent ratio what we can do is just scale it up if we times the top and the bottom by 2 this becomes 6 over 8, and 6 to 8 is an equivalent ratio. So this would be one correct answer. If we didn't want to times by 2, but instead we wanted to do this times by 3, times by 3, this would give us 9 over 12, and again, 9 over 12 would be an equivalent ratio. And we could keep going, we could times by 11 if we wanted to could multiply by anything. So this is number 19. Okay, now this is the last question in part two of the seventh grade review series. Um, so let's get on with it. This says in New York City, the sales tax is 8.875%. And we're told that if Eric buys a laptop for $899.99, then and an external hard drive for $149.99 estimate the total sales tax that he will pay okay well up until a few seconds ago I wasn't really liking the fact that I'd have to do all this math but now the word estimate makes things a heck of a lot simpler so this is the reason why this 8.875% we could round this it's close to 9% but it's also close to 10%. You know, it's not too far away from 10%. So while I'm estimating it, I'm going to pretend that this is 10%. Now, this right here is right on the door of $900. It's right on the step. So we're going to call it $900. And this right here is pretty much $150. So his total spend is his $900 plus his $150. So really, he spent ten fifty dollars plus. And we're estimating it at ten percent tax. So it says estimate the total sales tax. It doesn't want the total amount he'll pay. We're not going to find ten percent and then add it back to the one thousand and fifty dollars. All we're going to do is find ten percent. So a couple of ways to do that. Many ways to do it, in fact. But ten percent is zero point. 10, which is the same as just 0 0.1. So let's just use 0 0.1. So we could do 0 0.1 times 10 50. And we could do this by showing the work, or we could use a calculator, we could find an answer this way. The other thing to do is to know that, well, 10% is 1 tenth of the 100%. And so we could take our 10 50 and just divide by 10. That would find us 10% as well. We could also use the box method, which is where we put the part. Let me just go through this. The part goes in the top left. The whole goes in the bottom left. We always keep 100 in the bottom right. And then we have the actual percent in the top right. So in this case, if we're trying to find 10%, and we're trying to find 10% of the 1050. And we're trying to find out how much that part is, how much the tax is, the actual amount of tax. We know it's 10%, but what's the amount? And so in this case, the box method gives us this proportion 10x over 1050 equals 10 
over 100. And we could cross multiply and do all this other stuff. But basically, when we divide by 10, this is probably the easiest way. When we're dividing by 10, we just move the point one over. And so this, and also here we can see the zeros just cancel out. So here, it's very easy to see that the answer becomes 105. Even if we just canceled out these zeros, 105 over one is 105. And let's not forget it's dollars. Now we should just write a sentence. So an estimate of the total sales tax is $105. Now there's many different, there's infinite number of answers here depending on how much we estimated. Now I think it's appropriate that we estimated the 899.99 to 900 and also here we estimated 149.99 to 150. Now some students might have estimated and, and rounded this percent 8.875 to 9 percent which also would have been fine but 10 percent just makes things very very simple and so this is this concludes the second part of the math review series for seventh grade there's four parts in total